I'm going to be reviewing care of the client with increased intracranial pressure. At conclusion of this video, the nurse should be able to identify the appropriate care for a client with increased intracranial pressure. In order to provide appropriate care, the nurse would need to know the Glasgow Coma Scale, symptoms of increasing ICP, medications used to treat ICP, and nursing care of the client. Here is the Glasgow Coma Scale, so you can review it. As you can see, in the first column, you're checking whether the eyes open spontaneously to speech, to pain, or not at all, and you get a score for each of these things that they can or cannot do, best verbal response and best motor response. If you add up their numbers and the score is less than 7, the person is comatose. 15 is alert and oriented. Let's continue with the assessment. We're going to look for altered level of consciousness. That's often the earliest sign of increased intracranial pressure. Again, the Glasgow Coma Scale, less than 7 indicates coma. Confusion, restlessness, and pupillary changes are all early signs of increased ICP. Vital sign changes are a later sign, including widening pulse pressure. Now for implementation for the client with increased ICP, we want to have frequent monitoring of the following. Hourly vital signs, watch for increased systolic pressure and widening pulse pressure, bradycardia, that's called Cushing's triad, and it's a very late sign of increased ICP. We want to frequently monitor pupillary reactions, the Glasgow Coma Scale, verbal responses, and changes in level of consciousness. Continuing with the care of the client with increased ICP, we want to reduce environmental stimuli, prevent valsalva maneuver. You need to give stool softeners because we don't want the patient with increased ICP to be straining at a stool. We want to remind them to exhale with turning or moving, not to hold their breath when they're moving about. We want to eliminate coughing, sneezing, and bending over. We want to restrict fluids to 1,200 to 1,500 cc's a day. We want to make sure that they are neither hypervolemic or dehydrated. Medications are osmotic diuretics, corticosteroids, and anticonvulsants. We want to have the client avoid neck flexion and head rotation and elevate the head 30 to 45 degrees. Now we have a practice question. Which symptoms correctly indicate increased intracranial pressure? Headache and sensitivity to loud noises and bright lights, widening pulse pressure and a lowered pulse, narrowing pulse pressure and an increased rate, and increased temperature with an increase in respirations. Headache and sensitivity to loud noises and bright lights is incorrect. That's more symptoms for meningitis. Widening pulse pressure and a lowered pulse are symptoms of increased intracranial pressure, one of the three symptoms that form that triad. Narrowing pulse pressure and an increased pulse is incorrect. Increased temperature with an increase in respirations is not going to tell you about increased intracranial pressure. Number two is the correct answer.